Hello guys, and today I'm going to talk about a uh, general um, lobbying scam that's been discussed um, recently, okay? It's about someone um, who used to work for a company that inv was involved in finance in some way, lobbying the government to try and encourage the government to provide money for a scheme provided by um, this company. That's my understanding of it in simple terms. Now, I have provided some, I've done some screen grabs of me um, showing clips from YouTube. Um, for technical reasons, the program kept crashing because I think it, the computer was overloaded. So this will not, this will, the rest of this will not look as smooth as I would like. And it's been heavily edited simply because I had to keep stopping and starting, okay? Bear that in mind, okay? But it's all. A, but the, the in, but at first you'll think you know what it's about, but then you may realise there's more to this than you thought, okay? So I'm going to say bye now, but carry on watching to watch the rest of this. I've generally tried to cut and paste a lot of clips together, so it's, well not too many, um, so you can see what's going on. But as I said, it may not be to my usual standard because it's difficult sometimes once. The program shut down, and you've had to try and get the thing working again to remember exactly what you were saying before, okay? So thanks for watching. Bye, but carry on watching. Hello, guys, and today we're going to talk about politics, okay? Now, um, let's listen to... Um, what somebody has to say. Okay, now, let me explain. There's a current scandal, sort of, which isn't officially a scandal, because officially the guy didn't do anything wrong, officially. But many people feel that what he did was not in the spirit of the rules, even if he did not break any particular rules. Now, what happened was, um, this particular guy was working for a company and he continually tried to lobby the um, some politicians and and tried to get money out of them, right? But rather than going through normal channels, he wrote directly to senior um, politicians directly, bypassing um, the official channels. Okay. And here he talks about it. Now this is a woman MP who's interrogating this um, former employee of a company uh, that um, solved, from what I can understand, some sort of financial loans. And as I said, this guy worked for this company selling financial loans and um, tried to get money out of the government. In the end, the government basically said no, and the company went bankrupt. But let's just, now you might think, what's this got to do with anything? Well, anyway, just bear in mind, okay, what you're about to see, okay? Not feel that you have demeaned yourself and your position by whatsapping your way around Whitehall on the back of a fraudulent enterprise based on selling bonds of high risk debt to unsuspecting investors. Well, my, my view is that what I did was I made a choice to work for a business which I hoped would be a UK fintech for success story and many people believe that it would and I wanted to help that company grow and expand. And what I did at the time of economic crisis was put to the government what I genuinely believed to be a good idea for how to get money into the hands of small businesses and get their bills paid early. Right. But you might think, so what? Here's an employee, he's paid to lobby. So what? Well, this is where it's going to get really, really, really interesting, right? Now, let's look at a politician about 10 years ago, right, just who at the time was trying to win an elect a general election to become prime minister. He did, in fact, actually become prime minister. And let's see what he was campaigning for at the time. He was saying, if you voted for him, 
he was going to try and change the way things were done. And this is what this particular politician said about 10 years ago, just over 10 years ago, before he actually did become Prime Minister. But this was during an election campaign when he was trying to encourage people to vote for him. He wasn't the Prime Minister at the time he said this, OK? We're going to make absolutely sure that ex-ministers are not allowed to use the contacts and knowledge in government for their own private gain. We'll double the time when it's forbidden for ex-ministers to lobby government from 12 months to two years. We'll extend to 10 years the period during which ex-ministers must seek advice from the Advisory Committee on Business Appointments. We will put that committee on a statutory basis, so ignoring its advice will be an offence. Clearly, the first task of an incoming government will be to instruct the Prime Minister's advisor on the ministerial code to undertake a full review of this particular episode so the government can learn the lessons of what has gone wrong and change any other rules necessary to make sure it doesn't happen again. And we've also got to put a stop to the practice of one part of government lobbying another part of government. That's why we'll serve notice and cancel government agencies' contracts with lobbying firms. We'll also look favourably at all other suggestions, including those on how we can better regulate lobbying. OK, so... Let's look at that again, shall we? sure that ex-ministers are not allowed to use the contacts and knowledge gained in government for their own private gain. Right. So, there you go. And in another clip somewhere else, um, this particular, per okay, um, the person you saw at the beginning uh, does mention the fact that they would have personally financially gained from this had it worked out for him. So you might have noticed something by now. Yes, they're actually the same person. Just a 10 year difference. So hypocritical or what? We're going to make absolutely sure that ex-ministers are not allowed to use the contacts and knowledge gained in government for their own private gain. We'll double the time when it's forbidden for ex-ministers to lobby government from 12 months to two years. And now I've found a part of a clip, OK, where he discusses whether he would have personally benefited, financially, personally himself, from the lobbying that he made to the government to get the government to try and hand over some money. Can I ask you a, a delicate question, but I think a very important one, because you have spoken in your opening statement about the motivations that you had for uh, the lobbying, etc., helping SMEs and so on. Um, what was the arrangement in broad terms, in terms of your personal arrangement with the business? I, I believe you may have had some share options, etc. There's been all sorts of speculation in the press, some people saying that you suggested to friends you could, if everything went the right way, uh, make a gain of about £60 million. Others have said that's a vastly inflated figure. Um, can you tell us something about what you would expect to have gained had the, uh, your uh, involvement gone to plan and you'd had an effective... And by the way, when it says, what would you have gained, you meant him personally, not the business he was working for, but him personally. Exit from the business at some point in the future. Well, I was paid an annual amount, a generous annual amount, far more than what I earned as prime minister. And I had uh, shares, not share options, but shares in the business, which vested. Over which means if the business did well, he'd have got loads of money. Over the period of time of my uh, contract. Um, and so I think it's important for the committee to know that I, you know, was absolutely had a big economic investment in the future of Greensill. I wanted the business to succeed. I wanted it to grow. Um, I haven't uh, put a number on those things because while I think it's very important in the questions you're asking, you know, what was my role? How did I carry it out? Was it appropriate to lobby? Uh, did I overstep the mark? Um, you know, broad, the broader questions of what ex-prime ministers should and shouldn't do. The fact that I had this economic interest and a serious economic interest, that's important. But I don't think the amount is particularly germane to answering those questions. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a private matter. Well, well, it is and it isn't, though, is it? Because um, if the incentive... In other words, he, doesn't, he genuinely doesn't want to, and you'll find it later, he refuses to tell you how much money he would have made if it had all gone well.
and how much she was paid. If it was a matter of some tens of thousands of pounds, that would be distinctly different than if it was multiple millions of pounds, I think, in terms of the potential motivation you therefore uh, had for, for the, the, the lobbying that was carried out. I mean, you must accept that. I mean, do you view the £60 million figure as just totally absurd, or yeah, are we that's talking... A, that's a completely, completely absurd. Of... It's a completely absurd figure, but I can tell you, the motivation for contacting the government was that I thought we had a really good idea for how to help, uh, yeah. how to help extending credit to thousands of businesses, and I'd quite like to explain why I thought it was stop you there? Yeah, we'll such, a, such a great idea, because I think, you know... And, uh, I've sat on the other side of the fence um, in government where you have a credit crunch, you have difficulties in the credit market, and you're desperate to get banks lending, and you're desperate to get credit to businesses. And I well remember standing at the dispatch box and you know, being asked, well, this scheme that you announced six months ago, how many companies are taking part, how many banks are taking part, and often having to give very disappointing answers. So I was very keen for us to put forward our scheme because I thought it was absolutely in the public interest to try and get uh, money into, into small businesses. Okay, that, that's fine. But my, my questions, and, and they are, um, as I say, delicate questions, but I think they're important questions, because if there is a large amount of money riding on this business succeeding, then that is a different situation to a small amount of money riding on the business succeeding. And I, and I think I take it from what you're saying that there was at least a, a, a significant amount I had a significant, I wanted this business to succeed. I was being paid, I had shares, I had an interest in it. And, and I think that's important for the committee to know. And of course, you know, just as if a bank um, takes part in a loan guarantee scheme, that's good for the country because those loan guarantees will go to businesses. Um, so Greensill, if our scheme had been accepted of uh, being able to use supply chain finance bonds to get cash into businesses up and down the country, that would have been good for those businesses, but also um, good for us. And I wouldn't hide that for a second. I, but as I say, the motivation, having been on the other side of the fence, knowing when you're looking for these solutions, yeah. that it's so difficult sometimes to make them work, the motivation was about trying to help the government um, yeah. to get those schemes right. Made that point and, and, and we're clear on that, thank you. So in your written evidence to us, uh, you said, quote, you became concerned that the company might be in serious financial okay, difficulty well, in December we'll 2020. Now. now, that's not... We'll leave. Okay, right. Now, I've been having some technical problems, so... Yeah. Thanks very much. David, can I just come back to one point, which is annoying away at me a little bit? Um, right, so now the guys, uh, about um, quite some time later, decided to come back to the same issue and ask David again about how much money he would have made from all this if it had been successful. I think the intention is that what somebody has paid or what incentive, financial incentive arrangement they may be on is not relevant when it comes to how motivated they are or what the motivation is. I think most people would struggle with that idea, and I would accept that if these are small amounts, then you're probably right. But if they're very large amounts, then it's hard to argue, I think, that they don't have, wouldn't have some bearing for certainly most people as to how they would uh, uh, behave uh, under those circumstances. So could I just press you just a little bit harder on this basic salary that you were with, uh, on with Greensill? I mean, are we talking about something say uh, up to a million or over a million or can you give us some kind of feel because if it's a relatively small amount then then fine but it, if was a, it was a generous you know big salary that you might earn as a in, in someone in my position at a bank or what have you and the reason for if you're being stubborn in pursuing me i'm being stubborn in in my responses i do think it's important for people to know there was a economic interest absolutely both in pay in cash and in shares but the questions you're answering asking and answering um i don't think you require to the to know the exact um figures but yes it, it was a you know a generous salary the generous salary could cover a lot of possibilities couldn't it i mean can't you give us something a little bit more specific than that well i think you know as i've said if if uh, i had gone to work for a large bank um uh, or such like, as some of my predecessors have done, um, perhaps it would have been even more. 
Um, but I didn't want to go and work for a large bank. I was excited by working for a UK fintech firm. But as I say, in anyone's terms, it was a generous salary. Uh, could I go? Okay, he doesn't ask any more questions on that, so. Okay, right, so there you go, guys. Okay, further, um, when given a further opportunity, he refused point blank to say how much he'd actually um, received, okay? So now let's look again. Uh, once, once, just once more. If this idiotic thing will let me. Globalize. We are going to make absolutely sure that. X we are going to make absolutely sure that. X ministers are not allowed to use the contacts and knowledge gained in government for their own private gain. Let's hear that again. We are going to make absolutely sure that ex-ministers are not allowed to use the contacts and knowledge gained in government for their own private gain. We'll double... So there you go. You heard him say it himself, right? He should not be... He said that he was going to try and stop um, lobbyists um, from using the contacts they'd got obtained in government when they were out of government for personal gain. And there you had earlier him talking about how he personally gained by working at the company, how he would personally gain by um, lobbying on behalf of the company he now worked for and lobbying the government, the current government, which he's no longer in, um, for um, that government to provide money um, basically on behalf of the company he worked for. So there you go guys. Him originally campaigning 10 years ago against somebody like him doing precisely what he's been doing recently. Hypocrisy, definitely. Um, he could argue that he's 10 years older and 10 years more wise and that perhaps what he was offering 10 years ago wasn't realistic. I don't know what his excuses would be. But the bottom line is, it's do as I say, not as I will do in the future. And to some extent, that makes it even worse. Because if he'd been proved to have done something in the past, which he was now trying to prevent, he could say something like, yes, I did something in the past. It was, I thought I was doing the right thing, but we've now I realise it wasn't, and I'm going to try and stop this. Um, you know, but um, no, he was somebody who at the time strongly believed that people shouldn't be able to lobby governments in a certain way once they left government, and he went on to do the precise thing that he himself had campaigned against. But there you go. People say, what do you expect? It was a politician. All politicians lie. Um, and there you go. It's things like that why people don't always have a lot of um, confidence in politics, OK? I'm sorry for the editing problems. Um, you know, the program that is recording the screen keeps stopping and starting and causing problems it's a free one so what do you expect you know you get what you pay for and if somebody writes something for nothing you can't expect it to be that stable but there you go guys um david cameron former prime minister and the current um grenfield um lobbying scandal where to expand on this further he wrote several emails to like the person in charge of finance and others that he had known personally um, when he was, um, you know, the Prime Minister. He wrote to these people directly, um, almost as a former friend, based on the direct emails that he knew about and things like that. So these would be, like, pro I'm guessing here, some of these might even be um, contact details that would not be known by normal members of the public.
and most likely so. So he basically used his inside knowledge to try and lobby on behalf of a company for his own personal financial gain. Although I know he does personally dispute that and says that wasn't his main motivation. But there you go, guys. That's the current scandal, if you like, in Britain, OK? He says he's not broken any rules. There's no question he's broken any rules. But the point was they feel what he did was not in the spirit of the rules, considering he personally introduced a lot of them and personally campaigned to become prime minister on the basis that he would try and stop people um, lobbying government um, um, generally um, once they left power, OK, uh, because they had too much influence, he believes. And he went on to do precisely the same thing himself. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.